Thanks for listening to the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast, where each week we talk about a free piece or two of technology that you can use in your classroom. I'm your host, Shanna Martin. I'm a middle school teacher, a technology coach, and personalized learning coordinator for my district. And I'm her husband, Fuzz, and I have the same last name. Special. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to change it up a little and bit. And today we are going to be talking about content organization and lesson planning our original <laughs> title for this was <laughs> tech te- tools <laughs> it was, it was teacher tools which is a little bit too close to the title of this podcast teacher so. tools that are techie yeah. <laughs> instead it's content organization and lesson planning tools so which products applications technology are we talking about we are this going f- week which is week 19 week 19 Man, I feel like we started only 12 weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's week 19, and there was a big breakthrough this week. Our EdTech directory hit over 50 things Beow. in the EdTech directory on smartinwi.com. Nice. So that's pretty schnazzy. Yeah, so if you go to the website smartinwi.com, if you are on desktop and you click on the right, there's a big button that says... Ed Tech Directory. Ed Tech Directory. And if you're on mobile, it's just in the middle. You just keep you scrolling. You have to keep scrolling all the way down. It's like past my picture or something. Yeah. It's down there, but you'll find it. And it's very, very helpful. Yes. And it links all of the websites we talk about. And then it gives you a little blurb and some information. And then it tells you what podcast that you can learn more about the tool. Yeah. It's, it's pretty great if we don't say so ourselves. We try. But yeah. people that I work with find it to be very useful Yeah, to quickly dig through. Like if they need a website, instead of sending me an email, a mm-hmm. lot of times they just go to the ed tech directory. Yeah, so it's all so. alphabetical, and you can just go down there and scroll through and find what you need. Yeah, cool. All right, so this week, to get back onto our content organization and lesson planning tools. Mm-hmm. It sounds so formal. That's it's fine. fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so this week kind of is inspired because I have a clinical student right now. Um, I have oftentimes I have student teachers in my classroom um, or clinical students that come in. Um, I think every state kind of does a little bit differently or even every area. Clinical students are in their second or third or fourth placement where they're hanging out in your classroom to learn to be a teacher, but they're not taking over. Um, okay. It's mostly observation. Then they teach a lesson or two. Um, and then... Coming up this fall, actually, I'll have a student teacher that will be in my classroom So full-time. clinical is less hands-on than student teacher? Correct. Okay. Yeah, li- clinical students. And again, it depends on the college even, I think, okay. um, where clinical students oftentimes are in there. First, they start off the first one is just observation a couple hours a week. And mm-hmm. then they build up to observation and maybe doing like a specific student write-up. And then... Third clinical, they might do a short mini lesson, and it's more hours of observation. And then fourth clinical, they spend even more hours, like I think it's like 40 hours a semester or something in your classroom, and then they they teach a lesson or two. Do those, they end up having to do student teaching as well? And then student teaching is the last part of it. So then they do all these clinicals. But again, I think it depends on the college, because I've had students that have only been in a classroom like once and then there's student teaching in my okay. classroom versus right now I have a clinical who's in there f- her fourth clinical and then she'll student teach in the fall. Do you think that helps them get a vibe for the the room and getting to know the um, that students will eat you alive if you let them and that kind of stuff? I think so. Okay. Um, a lot of times and clinical students, they don't stay in the I don't same classroom. scare cl- anybody. No, they don't stay in the same classroom. So they will do a clinical in like four different classrooms at different age levels and mm-hmm. um, schools. And I think the more student teachers and clinical students can get into the actual classroom, the more comfortable they will be when they do student teaching. Sure. Um, to me, I welcome people to come hang out in my classroom all of the time, like college students and whatever. I'm like, come on in. I don't care. Uh, same thing happens in my classroom, whether you're in it or you're not. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like you you kind of, especially teaching middle school, you kind of need to just hang out with middle schoolers day in and day out to really understand. You'll never really understand how middle schoolers are going <laughs> to work, but, but at least then you get kind of a vibe of everything's going to be a little crazy. So yeah. um, anyway, so it was kind of inspired this week about helping out some of those 
new student teachers that will be coming in the fall because they have to prep over the summer and just um, some stuff I've helped our staff with uh, having student teachers into their classroom, like how to get people set up. So uh, our first one, chalk. Which I kind of laugh at. I laugh at their little chalk, even though, well, you know, we try to avoid it was chalk. A, it was shorter than dry erase marker. Unless it was, <laughs> <laughs> so funny or smart board pen. <laughs> um, so chalk is a cool website. It's called Chalk Planning or Chalk Plan Board, and um, I've recommended it. I've I've used it a little bit. I. I have a different set of ways I plan my things, but I have quite a few teachers and staff members that I work with and clinical students that and student teachers that have found um, chalk to be super useful. So when it comes to like planning your lesson plans, and it depends on the district you're in and where you're at, some people have to submit lesson plans and they have to be aligned with standards. And when you're trying to align content with other teachers and then you've got um similar assessments and common assessments and things like that. They all have to be kind of lined up. So chalk plan board is awesome for that. What you do is you sign yourself up, you log in and it, it tracks everything for you. Even you get like a little good evening. Here's your date. This is letter of the week. So it will organize you down to my schedule. Um, is kind of crazy where we run, we run a five day schedule, but like Monday, Tuesday, Friday, we run the same schedule. And then Wednesday, Thursday, we run blocks. Okay. I know some school districts run like evens and odds. And then we also actually have like a red and white in there. And mm -hmm. this plan board, actually you can plan your days and mark what your schedule is ahead of time. So then when you go to put your plans in, depending on what classes you're teaching and say like, this is gonna be your like odd day red and it will make sure that when you're writing your lesson plans yeah. that they line up on the right school schedule cool which is awesome mm -hmm. um and so you've got your plan board where you can set everything up it's a pretty little calendar you've got little post-it notes on the right hand side so it says like need to remember something you type it in your little like post-it note and you've got a calendar and you've got a task hmm. list you can add tasks that need to happen to that day then you can align your units so if you create a new unit, all of your lessons can go into your unit that way. Um, you can import stuff uh, from various different sources. If you need to, you can search through your sources so you can store your stuff in here as well. And then you can see your plans by day, by week, by month, or you can see it by unit. So however you want to organize it, you just pick, a, you pick your section. You even can divide it by, it'll be divided by semester. So you can put in your information, type in your lessons, put all the links that you want to into for your lesson. And then um, if you need to upload anything, if you've got directions you're adding and all that kind of stuff, you can put it all in one spot, which is awesome. Um, what's also cool about it is you have access. So once you put all your plans in there, you can access it from like your Android or your iOS. iOS. So you can like pull it up on your phone and be like, yeah. all right, I don't know what I'm doing. Or I got a sub coming in. Here's all my plans. Like you need to see it. That's um, cool. Is it all free? So the plan, all of this part is free. Okay. When you start collaborating and trying to share your plans with others and you want like a school group, uh, okay. then you have to pay for it. Sure. But just as a teacher, you can use it. You can it. just individually yep. on your own. Yeah, cool. Yep, add all your information in there, which is awesome. That's great. Um, and you can like align your standards. So you drop your standards in, like that can all be put into there. Um, and it's really helpful. So I know like I switched content a couple years ago and there was so, there's so much more planning involved versus if you've been teaching for 25 years and you're doing things differently, you know, as you shift yeah, and right, plan things. Right. Um, it's nice to just lay it all out and have it there. Even if you don't use it every day or you're doing a lot of student driven work, you still have a structure put in place yeah. to make sure that those directions are given or those kids you're checking in with or you're conferencing with students. And it's nice just to have it all laid out day by day in a really pretty format. Um, it's very easy to use. And what's kind of cool is then you can click like PDF so if you had to print it for your sub plans, mm -hmm. you can just knock out that PDF and send that out if you needed to. Um, so that's you could really also nice. uh, yeah share them with people that email way if you need to. yeah yeah printing so save a tree yes depends on how you yes but yes you can do yeah that. Absolutely. I mean yeah cool yeah so also I, um, yeah. I'm just gonna just gonna say. <laughs> 
their logo is pretty cute. So. You, you, I love how you're like, oh, you, this one, Pear Deck and Chalk, they're really cute logos. Yeah, I mean, but they're like professionally cute. They're not. No, they're yeah, they're not. They're not like uh, cute. trying to be, you know, yeah. too cute. But it's a little smiley piece of chalk. Right, as it should be. Because I once had a professor, uh, an English professor, when I was going to college, who used to suck on his chalk, like oh. while he was up at the chalkboard. I mean, I was. I'm old enough that we still had chalkboards in college, but um, but not that old. They were starting to switch. Um, but uh, yeah, the, my English professor used to um, bring his hand to his mouth and just suck on his chalk. So this is have just like a, a white ring in the middle of his mouth or yellow, depending on what color chalk. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I don't know what reminded me of this other than the name chalk. I don't know. And you're talking about chalk, apparently. Yeah. I think of, I don't know. I had a professor that threw an eraser at me one time. So there's that. Probably deserved it. I was talking. Um, don't do that. Class. <laughs> it's rude. Right? Especially well, if you're going to, to school teachers. to be a teacher. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so chalk plan board is awesome. And for those <clears throat> planning out, if you're, you're a planner and you want things laid out really organized nicely, I highly recommend it. If you're a new teacher or a student teacher, like this is the best place to start because you have to do formal lesson plans. Yeah. Um, it looks like a great tool. It's a really great free tool. And then, you know, if you want to upgrade and start sharing with staff, you know, go for it. But it's just, it's cool. At least check it out. Try it out and see um, how well organized you will be using that. So, yay. Yay for yay. chalk. Yay for chalk. Yay for chalk. And it's not even sidewalk chalk. No, but we use a lot of that. We do at our house. There's a whole lot of sidewalk shot going on. Right now it's covered up by snow, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> Not quite. All right. So on that note. On to Wakelet. Tool number two, Wakelet. So Wakelet is not just meant for teachers by any means it's you wakelet is for anybody mm -hmm. it is not an education focused tool but there are so many teachers i know that use wakelet it you know it could be an education tool if it wants to be yeah oh i mean so, I, I even see on their on their main homepage, um one of their samples is for teachers mm -hmm. uh, but then also for uh, people learning uh, how to code and people using it for recipes it's a content organization tool yeah not super formal like you can curate content you can get content and <laughs> throw it into topic based you can buckets content, content okay so <laughs> wakelet so log into wakelet sign yourself up it's free oh wait free tech tool awesome and you make these little things called wakes which are like collections of it's like collections of information mm -hmm. um and what's cool is you add your little cover image and then you can add a title and then you go through and there's just like these little green x's and you just start adding content so um if you find a cool like we're talking about avengers lately yeah you know there's this movie coming out <laughs> And you want to put all of the cool articles that are talking about the movie, but you don't want to read them yet because you don't want spoilers because you don't want to hear about it before you actually see the movie. Right. So you could create a wakelet on that. So you put your little cover picture in mm -hmm. and then you could say Avengers don't read until after the movie and then put in all the articles and pictures and write little questions and you'd have a wakelet created all about the Avengers. That's great. And it would be so schnazzy. You could, let's say you're planning a trip to Disney. Mm -hmm. You could toss all your Disney stuff into a, a wakelet. Yes. And then you'd have it all there. You could. And you, you could probably search for other people's Disney can. wakelets. So what's cool about wakelet is we kind of get off on a tangent here. So wakelet, basically, you create like these content collections. Mm -hmm. You can make them public so anybody can see them. And it's kind of cool because as a teacher, if you're searching for content stuff for your students, you can, or students could search if they wanted to, or you keep them private and you can set your different settings for who can see your wakelet. So what's cool is as a teacher, so if you're starting a new unit and you need your students to have a bunch of resources right away, because maybe it's gonna be more of a student driven project, but you want to give them some background or have a source for a resource page for them to start from, mm -hmm. you could create a wakelet 
that has the content that you want your students to work from. And then they could just work off of your Wakelet as a resource page. Um, and you could set it up that way. So you can set up your settings under like private or public or unlisted. So only the people who have the link can actually see your Wakelet. Right. So you could just share that like in your Google Classroom with your students and they would have access to the Wakelet to use all that information or like questions and stuff like that, which is very cool. Um, and I know like some teachers, it's a cool thing if you're gonna do like book clubs for students where the kids or even your students could or you could create a page for a book club and have like discussion questions if they're gonna go to that or um, resources on authors or they could actually have book discussion boards and create those in Wakelets. You could also use them for like recommended lists for like books of like, here's our, from your classroom, like sharing with another classroom, here's our book lists, our recommended like top 10 books that, you know, all high schoolers should read or right. that kind of thing. So Wakelet is super simple to set up and really easy to add content to. And I'll put a picture, kind of like a screenshot so you can see it in, in um, at smartwa.com where you can see all the different choices. So if you click, you can add text, you can add YouTube videos, you can connect to social media. So you can connect it to Twitter, bookmarks, images, PDFs. You can connect things from your Google Drive. So you could put documents in there or like Google Forms or any of that kind of stuff. So it's really cool that you can add all this content it's very simple for then the user to kind of like skim through and pull information from as they need to, um, or even setting up like portfolios this way, or, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of flexibility. So if you're doing like personalized learning plans for students, this would be a great place to do that. You could do any sort of, like I said, like student driven pro or even a, or a regular classroom project. But if you just need to load a bunch of information in for your students in a very easy to, organized way for them to pull content from yep they could do that it's very cool to use that is it sounds great so, yeah yeah you can just do it and it, you could use it for uh, uh all sorts of different things i can think mm -hmm. of well yeah and things that are not like so i'm giving you like all the teacher stuff you guys wake lit for but you really could like i want to redesign our kitchen so here's all the things that i want to put into my wake lit to make my kitchen look like something from better homes and gardens yeah instead of from better homes and gardens circa 2005 right this is true <laughs> um <laughs> so you could use it for your own personal use um that's why wakelet's kind of fun to use and you can cruise around if you want to check out like search and see some of the um what other people have done you can kind of see what other people have set up there's as and you can give all kinds of background information or even like local if there's events going on that you want to share your kids like a newsletter a parent newsletter you could totally put that into a wakelet and share the link to your parents out if you send it out through remind or something they would have access to it with that in whether you have that like in the the unlisted version where you just those who have the link could see the collection that would be a cool thing to do too cool yeah so our super formal title of content organization and lesson planning <laughs> isn't really formal, but it's cool things that you can test out and use in your classroom. Excellent. So, yeah. All great stuff per use. Episode 19, folks. Episode 19. Hmm. Well, thanks for tuning in. This has been the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. If you ever have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at SmartNWI. And if you ever want to get more information on the links to the technology discussed in today's episode, you can visit smartnwi.com. New episodes each week. Thanks for listening. Go educate and innovate. The ideas and opinions expressed on this podcast and the Smart in WI website are those of the author, Shanna Martin, and not of her employer. Prior to using any of the technologies discussed on this podcast, please consult with your employer regulations and make sure they're cool with it. This podcast offers no guarantee that these tools will work for you as described, but we do this because we hope they do. Thank you again for listening, and we will talk to you again next week on the Tech Tools for Teachers podcast. Episode 20, coming up. What? What?